Capacity building demands self-care. Yes, you heard me right. Capacity building demands self-care. Welcome again to another edition of Common Sense with Freddie. So what's up, guys? How have you been doing? I'm sure you've been listening to our different um recordings and if you're just joining this community for the very first time or if you just see my face for the very first time my name is coach wilfred asukor i am the founder of zit worldwide i am a capacity builder and also a certified john maxwell coach and also an it consultant i work in the tech space here in the us i train i mentor and i coach so if you are looking to start a career in tech, I am here, especially the non-coding or the non-programming tech careers. Definitely, I would like to be your synergy and get you up to speed. Now, why did I choose to talk about this all the time? Because I come from a country or a continent where there is a certain narrative because of what is predominantly called religion. Religion has taken um, control of a lot of young people's mind and heart. They so believe in getting rich overnight with miracle money or using um, miracle soap or miracle water or miracle this or that. Listen, this is 2024. We need to start synthesizing or carrying young people along and letting them understand that that is not the way to go. And that's exactly the reason why my focus is on capacity building. Now, capacity building demands self-care. And let me start this conversation by telling you a story. Now, growing up in Africa, I discovered that when parents struggles even if they don't struggle they sponsor their child or their children to um, school colleges or sponsor their education there is this um tradition that when they sponsor one that one will have to you know get empowered get a job and then take care of the rest and you know and so on and so forth yes that seems to be the normal norms and that's what we grew up to see and you'll be wondering who made it that rule or how did we come about this what was the um reason behind such practices that when you sponsor one person and this person would get to work and then sponsor the rest so now let's think about it for a minute if one person is being sponsored like myself, I am the first child. When I mean a first child, I mean the first born. I do have an elder sister. And to add to some of this narrative, some communities, some villages believe that a girl child is not supposed to be sponsored to school. For example, in my community, a lot of fathers, a lot of parents, they don't care about, you know, the female children and they don't care about sponsoring their college education so they consider the male child to be the first child which is i mean i don't know how and who made such norm or practices in many communities or many states or many villages in africa so upon your graduation you are expected to come back and sponsor and take care of the family and shoulder the family responsibilities, it can be very challenging. So as a young graduate from college, the ideal is for you to self-establish yourself first. The ideal is for you to take care of your career and situate it first so that you can be more um, grounded to be able to self-care yourself to be able to self-care others but many a times as soon as the young man or the young women would take care of um their basic needs like accommodation first 
The next thing is they shoulder the family responsibilities. The weight of the family problems begin to fall on their shoulders. Imagine one child, like when I left my parents at the age of 15, I was left by myself to source for how to live, how to secure admission, how to scatter for my school fees, how to ensure that I strive out there. And upon graduation, my four siblings were waiting for me. My four siblings, including my mother, making five of us, they were waiting for me. So if I had to carry all their responsibilities from my basic salary that I secured a job in the company where I was working, how will I be here today? So what am I saying? Self-care first. You cannot offer what you don't have. If your cup is not full, then you won't be able to offer and have enough. So self-care yourself to situate your finances. And the best thing to do, which I say it all the time, is when you secure a job, focus on increasing your capacity. Build your portfolio. Build your skill set to a point whereby you will always be relevant in your chosen field of endeavors. Seek to become a subject matter expert. Empower and ground yourself first because if you do not, then in the beat of solving family problems, unfortunately, I, I, I have to tell you this, the family problems are endless. Those family problems were there even before some of us were born. You are not the one to solve all your family problems. You have to empower yourself first. Make self-care a priority before others. Because if you don't make yourself, you know, or self-care priority, then the chances of you sinking the entire family is extremely very high. Extremely very high. So I will encourage and I will recommend that situate yourself by increasing your capacity. If you do not increase your capacity, who will you blame if you get fired from where you're working? If you don't increase your capacity, how would you secure another job? Did you get fired in that current job that is giving you money to take care or solve the family problems? Listen, it is important that you make your own self, your career, a priority. Because when the head is impacted, absolutely the whole entire body would suffer setback. So if your family is looking up to you, if your family is depending on you, and when I mean family, I mean extended family, how will you be able to shoulder their responsibilities if you've not increased your capacity? Some of us are still stuck with our first degree. Some of us, after our first degree, we've not added another credentials or we've not increased the capacity to be able to take on higher responsibility or diversify or transition to a more lucrative career space. The choice is yours. I want you to believe that making a self-care a priority doesn't mean you are selfish. It doesn't mean you don't care about your family. It just means that you care about them so much that you want to be there for them for a longer time. So if I were you, I would rather sit them down and have a conversation and explain to them, which is exactly what I did. When I finally, you know, secured a job after waiting for about three years before I could land at one, and think about it, within those periods, I did not secure a job. My family problems did not go away. My family members did not pass on. My family members were still breathing. So now that I've gotten this particular job, why should I want to shoulder all their family problems? Absolutely, it wasn't going to be possible. 
So I had to focus to increase my capacity by seeking to becoming a pilot in the United States. And when I got to the US, I did not only stop at that, I went ahead to you know, secure my master's in healthcare informatics. I went ahead to seek more certifications to empower my career. Today, I am not just able to take care of my family, I am also able to take care of my immediate family and still stay afloat. Ladies and gentlemen, make self-care a priority in career building by increasing your capacity. Capacity building, it's all about to keep you sustained for the longest time. You don't want to get out of a job or you don't want to lose your skill set in the, this you know evolving digital world. You know what I mean? So once again, thank you. I'm sure this message is for somebody out there and I want you to make sense out of it. Like ever, see you all at the top because the bottom is crowded. <laughs>